The Rick Wilson is back. We've got a lot to catch up on. The breakdown starts now. Welcome to The Breakdown. I'm Tara Setmayer. The Rick Wilson is back with us, and I'm here for it as well as Delighted I Delighted to be with you, you, Tara. I have missed you, my friend. Delighted um, to be back. Yes. Well, there's been a lot going on. It hasn't been... It hasn't been... A couple things. Been gone. Just a couple things happened. A couple happened. things here and there. Yes, but um, glad to have you back so we could chat all about it and catch up on what's Yes, going I was on. I was in the in the terrible wilds of both Manhattan and Martha's Vineyard uh, during your last broadcast week and I had Tough. to suffer through the the, the deep agonies of, of fundraising in those places. So here we are. <laughs> no, God bless you for it. I think the deep agony was actually the air travel to and from those places. And uh, you got caught up in some bad weather. on. There the was a little day. bit on the back. Well, there was a little crazy on the front end, a little crazy on the back end. So what else is new? It's par for the par for the uh, Wilson travel course. <sighs> right, right. Well, time um, to spare. Fly by air. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I haven't been on an airplane actually since COVID. Oh, no, it's really? Been, it's, it's the longest I've ever gone wow. without flying. It's been two and a half years. Yeah, it feels wow. weird. But I'm in no rush, to be honest with you. I mean, we were usually we travel around this time of year. We go to Italy for our anniversary in September. Um, but we said, you know what? It's that we'll find something to do here. This I don't want to go through the stuff that you went through and all the horror stories flying. But well, it's been a minute, but uh, I, I'm ready to get out of I'm ready to go check out some non extradition countries. But you know. <laughs> I, I, listen, New Zealand is uh, a place of choice for us if we ever need to get out of here. New Zealand I have friends in New Zealand. I, I have some friends in New Zealand who have a who have a compound large enough to accommodate their private jet. So I, I God bless them. New Zealand. Listen, is, all I ask is, is that they give me a chance to either like work on the farm vehicles or shear sheep or whatever to earn my keep. You listen, know? there's more sheep than people in New Zealand, so you have a job there. Definitely doing that. Don't don't tell Sub Gorka that he'll book a long vacation. <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, my God. Anyway, all right. Let's talk some politics. <laughs> Instead of boring people with our desires to jet off to New Zealand in case it all goes to hell after 2024. Um, no, seriously. So speaking of going to hell, Donald Trump is in uh, legal hell right now. Ever since the legal search warrant on Mar-a-Lago a couple weeks ago, the fallout from that is still on. Doesn't that seem like it was like a year ago? It does. It was only two freaking weeks ago. I know. I know. It was two weeks ago, literally. Like, I, it feels like two months ago. But that's the way it is. We always say, and people in politics say a week is an eternity in politics. And here's a perfect example of that. Um but anyway, so since then, the the judge, the magistrate who uh, issued the warrant has said, look, I'll, I, I'm open to uncovering some stuff here, but the government's got to redact it, bring it back. Let me see what's go, what's what. So we're waiting on what the what the feds are going to do and whether the judge right. accepts that, how much of that affidavit we're actually going to see. I think Thursday is the deadline for that. Um, but in the meantime, Donald Trump's legal strategy has been all over the place. I don't know if you want to call it a legal strategy. It's more like a PR delay tactic strategy, but they're filing motions to try to get a, a special magistrate come in and look at look at the documents to see what's privileged and what isn't. I mean, Hillary Clinton went through this, this has before, the same, yeah, I mean, but this isn't legit. Tara, this has the same relation as to a legal strategy as a guy who's locked in a padded cell who writes a novel on the walls in his own feces has to <laughs> Proust. This is not a legal right. strategy. Right. This is just Trump bouncing shit off, yelling at people, throwing stuff out there. You know, the, the, good luck, pro se, uh, trying to, to defend yourself on this, Donald. That's going to work out really well. What against did, the I, I, I kind of half missed that part. Is, is he really trying to represent himself? I, what, what was the story? Apparently that? so. I, 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 I mean, and, and like they didn't list the attorneys of record on the on the filing. It's just like. That's just sloppy legal work. So made it, I think, look like. Trump well, look, was, I mean, these so. are people. These are people who, who, if you were driving down a uh, an aban toward an abandoned strip mall with with only a pawn shop, a a, a liquor store, and a lawyer's office, and you walked in and said, "Hey, you guys are worse than the Trump lawyers," they would be deeply insulted. 
Yeah. Adam because these are not smart guys and no, girls. No, I mean, one of them was like a parking garage rep or something. Like, they, they are not experienced in this area. I know he'd been shopping for some more experienced lawyers, but he's he's stiffed every major law firm in New York City almost, and no one wants to work for him because he doesn't pay his legal bills. So he doesn't exactly have the best people working on his legal team. And it's evidenced by the motions that they're filing. Um, you know, Having so excellent lawyers is a, is, a, is a great thing. And I, I have truly excellent lawyers across a variety of domains. And all the money you spend on excellent lawyers comes back in two forms. One, <laughs> peace of mind. Right. And two, not having strip mall parking lot lawyers <laughs> file motions for you in federal court where prison is on the line. No shit. I mean, it, 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 but it's so on brand, right? It's so on brand for Trump so on for brand. this to be like this, this absolutely chaotic, crazy town legal filings it, it, when it's really, really serious. Like we found out now that they, they hauled out all those boxes, right? Multiple times they went to Mar-a-Lago. They took stuff back that Trump wasn't supposed to have. Then we find right. out that he had these classified documents. Now we find out that there was 300 classified documents a thousand in total with all the boxes that he went through. Right. And they're trying to say that, oh, you know, Trump went through the boxes himself and and unilaterally he, declassified them. Get the hell out of here. There's, that's not a thing. OK, let's no. just dispense with that nonsense right now. Cash Patel and the rest of these morons the, that are these Trump lackeys that are trying to go out here and gaslight the American people into believing that Trump can just go declassified. And that's how it works. That's not, not how, any how of this works. it works. That's not so, how any of this works. <laughs> right. So that's a nonsense defense. It's it, and and here's the other thing, right? Even if that were the case, it's not, but even if it were, it doesn't matter. Those documents don't belong to him. They belong to the American people. They are government documents. He doesn't get to just keep them and say, mine, 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 like the seagulls in uh finding Nemo. Okay, it doesn't work like that also. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's like Trump So I've, like, we've gone no, from so we've gone from madmen painting the walls their cells with their own feces writing a novel in Proust <laughs> um, to to <laughs> fighting Nemo. I love where the show is going so far. I yeah, really well, do. I'm, this is see what happens when you when you go right? away. I come back with a lot back. of pent up That's pent up right. demand. <laughs> a lot of pent up wit. Yes. Um anyway, so yeah, so this is not a joke, which is just no. and and it's. I just feel like because we're back into this fire hose of fuckery situation again, that people aren't really realizing the gravity of what Trump has done. You know, we have a friend, right. AB Stoddard. She's an excellent um, yeah, very uh, reporter, smart, very good reporter, super smart. You see her on MSNBC commenting a lot. She used to do Fox a lot back in the day. Straight down the line, uh, you know, straight shooter. She was on MSNBC NBC today uh, with with Nicole Wallace, and she mm -hmm. made a really good point. Remember how you and I were speculating on what we thought Trump was doing with these documents? We had right. our theories, right? Mm -hmm. and I thought it was for financial gain mm -hmm. or some type of leverage. She actually said that that the, the possibility has been discussed that he could have used these documents or was holding on to them for leverage against the government in case they were trying to come for him for something else, that he would say, if you try to indict me or try to take me down, I'm taking the whole country down with me and give up these secrets or these documents to Iran or Russia or Saudi Arabia or any of our enemies. And I thought to myself, can you believe that this is actually a plausible scenario? It's plausible. I believe yet, that bastard yet, would do that. And yet, that. you know, when you when you when you describe it, Tara, not one part of my brain says outrageous. Trump right. would never do anything like right. that. Right. That's absurd. You not say, one part of my brain. You go, that sounds about right. Right. <laughs> so you saw. I'm sure that his son, um, the dipshit that he is, the the older dipshit, Don Jr. Right. He was at a at a fundraiser for your Florida man buddy Matt Gates over the weekend, and actually said. That, oh, yeah, the nuclear codes, if he still has them, that'd be a good thing. Maybe they're in the linen closet at Mar-a-Lago. <laughs> really? You know, really? I, I got to say, I, I got to say, <sighs> anytime Cokie McPhail's son opens his trap, this is a this is a guy who's going to produce some pearl of, of counterproductive wisdom <laughs> or counterproductive statement that is absolutely going to set the Trump lawyers back on their heels. And now they're going to be able to, to pull this moron into court and just make him sit there for like 30 minutes until, until he starts to, you know, feel a little, oh feel the numbness fading away from his nose and lips. Oh. And then he'll start talking a lot. 
over it's and over and over again. So bad. It's so bad. I'm not talking too fast. You guys are talking too fast. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. We I, I have a bunch of names for him, including Coakley Carmichael. <laughs> What's another one? Please tell me you got one more. I got so many. <laughs> Listen to the audience right now. If you Donnie have, Rails. <laughs> if you guys have nicknames for uh, Don, Don Jr., please send them to us. We love yes, to send us your Don Cokie and the Band. Send us your Don Jr. Cokie nicknames. Cokie and the Band. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. an aficionado of the Bolivian marching powder. Oh my god! Oh my gosh! Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I miss you, Rick, when you're gone. Uh, <laughs> Moving on, um, to wrap this part up about Donald Trump and this stupid lawsuit now that he's yeah, If y'all hear some FBI, dogs barking in a minute, yeah, don't take anything askance. It's just my dogs will be barking in a minute, oh, potentially. It's so, actually been a while. Just it's somebody's in the driveway. It could happen. They, they, they will either sense it or not. What kind um, of somebody? A safe somebody or somebody of concern? Because it wouldn't be the first time. It's a known quantity. Got it. All right. So that's good. So we can relax. Just so folks know that uh, the Rick Wilson would, would not be the first time that his dogs have alerted and it hasn't necessarily been a friendly. Yep. So but tonight we don't have to worry about that. Um, putting an exclamation point on this, like I said, this nonsense with Donald Trump and this this lawsuit against the FBI and their search and trying to get a third party to siphon through the, the documents. It's it, His lawyers aren't even licensed to practice in Florida. That's why it, it looked like he was pro se because they're, they didn't comply with local procedural rules. It's just it's, it's so it, ridiculous. So ridiculous. Um, speaking of ridiculous, I gotta, we got to talk about Ron DeSantis. Plot Ron gun, DeSantis. Top gut. Top, top gut. <laughs> so um, I don't know if you guys have seen, but today it's primary day in Florida. And we are waiting. Polls closed 12 minutes ago, 12 in, minutes the, ago. in the yeah. East Coast part of Florida. Yeah, and then in the Panhandle where it's in Central Time, it, one more hour, right? Throw a um, rock that way in right. my neighborhood, and you will hit hit the Central Time Zone. So um, we're waiting to see who the Democratic nominee will be to run against DeSantis. In the meantime, he's been running around, not campaigning in Florida necessarily. He's been running around doing a preliminary 2024 campaign out there. Weird how he's money. running ads in Ohio and Pennsylvania. Yes. Why? Why there? Why there? And didn't he show up at a, a, a rally or did something with uh, our buddy J.D. Vance there in Ohio? He was with J.D. Vance in Ohio and with uh, and with Doug Mastriano in um, in Pennsylvania. There was a photograph, a still photograph of, of Mastriano and and DeSantis together. And those are two men with the most awkward postures of anyone in humanity. I tweet. I, I replied to a tweet about it today, and I said, "Your atmosphere and gravity are strange to us, and these bodies we are not yet accustomed to." <laughs> it's so. Tr it's so true. It's like, such an wrong? awkward picture. I don't know. I, I don't. I, I should have thrown it into the uh, into the chat earlier for production. But it's so. They're they're both <laughs> standing in these strange positions. Like Mastriano's got his hands on his hips, like. I am posing as if I were a casual cowboy looking out over the wide prairie. <laughs> and He's... Ron DeSantis has his arms out like a robot that's not quite calibrated yet. Well, it's probably because his shirt was too tight. He's putting on a couple pounds there. So maybe... Listen, maybe... I'm, no, I, I'm, not, I'm not one to talk about, about having a couple <laughs> extra pounds. But, yeah, you but know, you're not running for office. There's so. a trick. Don't yeah. wear a size 42 suit when you're a size 46 husky. I think that that applies. It's a trick I board. know. <laughs> that's a that's a unisex tip right there. Yeah. You know, don't wear a size smaller than you actually are. It's unflattering. Maybe somebody needs to let Ron DeSantis. The know. Ron DeSantis 2024 campaign sponsored by Spanx. Yeah, <laughs> by Skims. Um, <laughs> our good friend Randy Rainbow, who I had on a couple months ago. If you guys don't know Randy Rainbow, please Google him. Just and, Google Randy and Rainbow. And take in all of his glorious, all unearthly, his magic. amazing, creative talent and his parodies. He did, and he's nominated for this, by the way. I hope he wins the Emmy this time. Um, he did a, a, a parody called I'm Gay and going after DeSantis and the Don't Say Gay nonsense in Florida. And he has a line in that parody where he talks about his suits being off the rack 
from Burlington Coat yes. Factory. Yes. So, you know, I every time I see DeSantis in his ill-fitted suits, I think of the wonderfully talented, brilliant Randy Rainbow and his Burlington Coat Factory <laughs> reference. Coat Factory. <laughs> please, 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 guys, trust me, Google it. It's worth it. He's it's got a new well one out too. It. He's got a new one out too. It's hilarious about the FBI raid. Anyway, shout out to Randy Rainbow and we love you. And I hope as you're always. Happy. Um, so anyway, Ron DeSantis, speaking of stupid videos, also put out this, this ridiculous Top Gov video, um, a play on the whole Top Gun thing where he's cosplaying a, you know, Top Gun pilot. And it's just so crazy. It combines both his insufferable culture war obsessions with a level of cringe douchiness yes. that cannot be measured by standard scientific instruments. Yes. Uh, all, all I have oh. to say is to Ron DeSantis, and, and I know I've been very tough on Ron DeSantis, but Ron, if you're listening, your media consultants hate you. <laughs> no one would have proposed this unless they had some deep-seated hatred of you. Whoever told you, this is like in The Godfather, the one who tells you there's going to be a media and you'll be safe, that's the traitor. Whoever told you this was a good idea, whoever told you that Slop Gut was a great video idea, <laughs> you've got to say to them, get the fuck out. Do not listen to these people because they have not called the ball-shaped orb. They are, they are not your, your chicken wingmen. They are not good for you. <laughs> No, they're sitting around eating the same crudite. Uh, I feel the need, laws. the need to feed. <laughs> Look, I think that DeSantis is me. <laughs> work for Oz too, because Oz is having a rough go of it. Between him and the crudite platter and the veggie arguments, and <clears throat> this nonsense in Pennsylvania, his media people hate him too. And the fact, uh, to loop back on Oz just for a second, yes, his, his people clearly hate him too. The, the fact that, that, that they would have taken a picture of him kissing a star on the Walk of Fame in Hollywood. Have you been to the Walk of Fame in Hollywood? Dear God, I wouldn't get near it with a Ray Cal suit on. Wait. You're going to get some sort of like, like exotic, uh, exotic, previously unknown STD from kissing your star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame? For talk the about, love of God. Talk about a douchebag move. Right Don't there, go right? near it with a black light for fuck's sake. Oh my God. Well, talking about cringe. CSI just... dick rot. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the video of him dancing? Eating, oh, yeah. Like, eating an apple and dancing, doing some kind of like, I don't know, 1970s like Turkish disco moves. I don't know what that was. But listen. I'm telling you right now, listen to me. As a Jersey girl where we have the fist pump and we know how to dance in Jersey, that shit ain't Jersey. So I don't know. He needs to take that back to somewhere else because that I, I, was awful. I, I got to tell you, I, I make it a point <laughs> to try to never wear silly hats <laughs> and to never be caught videotaping, uh, being videotaped dancing. These are not things that I am good at. But he my, did well, my very large, strange head does not go well <laughs> with silly hats. You know, to wit, Ron DeSantis wearing a fighter pilot, wearing, wearing a bone dome, wearing a helmet that was clearly <laughs> too small for his giant noggin. And, and Dr. Oz dancing, I'm sorry, it's just, what the fuck is in the cringe water lately? I good job, that. Republicans. You selected the most <laughs> awkward geeks who sat at the edge of the fucking prom and were like, I didn't want to go with her anyway. Right, right. And now they're they're running to be U.S. senators and governors and things like that. And speaking of that, you saw Mitch McConnell um, asked about. I mean, this is the most defeated I think I've seen Mitch McConnell in a long time. Yeah, oh, and he's he's getting his. Listen, they took 175 million dollars of the NRSC's money, and I was told if you don't spend all your money on TV, you're a grifter. Right. And they spent twenty three million of one hundred and seventy five million on television, and the rest went to things like twelve million dollars for American Express. <laughs> really, for for what? Yeah, and, and nineteen million dollars for text messages. Really, for what? for what? Because right now the NRSC has managed to not get any of the NRSC's candidates on the ballot. Doctor Oz instead of Dave McCormick, mm -hmm. Herschel Walker instead of Purdue. I mean, you go through the list. And, Blake, and they, Blake Masters, Blake Masters, Arizona. J.D. Vance, JD all the Vance. cuckoo pantses. Yep. And so Mitch McConnell, 
is naturally feeling a little bit down at the heels. He's not really his normal perky self. He he, he doesn't want to do the dancing right now, Tara, because <laughs> because frankly that money's gone and Rick Scott, his his head of the NRC, is on a yacht, yacht in, in Italy. <laughs> and, and and you know, candidate quality does matter. And since most of these people are crazier than a shit house rat, I, I think we might get our asses kicked a little right. bit. And I'm stuck being minority leader. Uh, and, <laughs> and, and, and while I'm good at the job, I, I don't. I, and by the way, if if the president would like to humiliate my wife some more, I'd be happy to take it. I mean, he play, He did his best version of Ted Cruz. For those who don't know what we're talking about, right. uh, a reporter asked him over the weekend uh, how he felt about Donald Trump insulting his wife, Elaine Chow, because she was one of the one of the cabinet members who was resigned over January 6th and was ready to vote on the uh, 25th Amendment to oust him. And so he insulted her and called her all kinds of names because that's what Donald Trump does. And a reporter asked Mitch McConnell, does he have anything to say uh, about Donald Trump insulting his wife? And you know what he said? No. No, I don't. No, in fact, I'd like, that. Just I'd like him to insult her some more right. because, you know, uh, I find myself strangely aroused when he abuses me. I don't, I don't right. know what it is. I was just going to say, because it's some kind of weird political S&M oh game God. that these guys play. Him and Ted Cruz and all of them in this weird I, there, uh, And I, I wrote this in, one, in my book, and I mean this, folks. When I tell you, and I know some of them, not on a professional basis, not on a personal basis, but on, a, uh, on, a, on an amusing acquaintance basis, <laughs> There are more dominatrixes per capita in Washington, D.C. than any other place on the planet Earth. These people like to get their naughty little fannies spanked and told that they're very bad boys. And, and so that's when, when, so when, when Trump insults them, you can practically see them to mess in this bizarre <laughs> moment of, of, of uh, why, why do I feel so aroused? That would explain a lot, I guess. I guess that would explain a lot of how we got Ted Cruz here. hasn't been that aroused since his victims stopped screaming in the special room in the basement. Oh, God. That's a joke. That's a joke. Is it? Oh, my God. Oh my I'm not God. saying that Ted Cruz is a Zodiac killer. No. But there was a... One time my daughter took a picture of a sign at a bookstore in Tallahassee. And the sign... The sign uh, said, you know, sign copy of Ted Cruz book. And the, the rest of this, I'll have to dig it up and post it. Yeah. But if you circled all a bunch of different letters on it, it spelled out, Cruz is the Zodiac Killer. Oh, my God. That guy gets gets just dragged more than anyone. It's just so easy. He just makes it so easy, some of these guys. But anyway, um, back to just a little bit of seriousness. Um, actually, no. it's We don't have to stay serious about this because it is just so absurd. This the, the the Oz Fetterman social media drama that's been going on. I've had mixed feelings about it. Like I was I was all about the entertainment value during the summer. It's keeping people engaged, and then right. I'm like, I think it's going a little too far now because it almost feels juvenile. But that's the world we're in. Um, Oz Raise is out hand. here now. Yeah, I'm here. I, no, yeah, but you're not running for the Senate, though. You know what I mean? You're not running. If for the I Senate. ever run for the U.S. Senate. All of you should just move. Just run away. <laughs> Whatever state I've chosen to curse with my presence in the U.S. Senate, you should just flee as soon as you can. No, my, rule, think... my rule will be, my rule, much like when Ted Cruz has sex, will be brief, <laughs> cruel, and regrettable. <laughs> I can't compete with that. I can't compete with that. Oh, my gosh. I... Well, C-SPAN's ratings would certainly go through the roof for your <laughs> one-minute speeches on the Senate floor. That's for sure. Or one minute or the House, though. But your your Senate full speeches would be... Um, they would be a combination of... events. They would be a combination of, 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 of elevated rhetoric reflecting a classical <laughs> education and dick jokes. I mean, that's, <laughs> really, that's really me in a nutshell. <laughs> and not Dick Cheney, folks. We're not talking about Dick Cheney <laughs> no. jokes. No. You know what? Before I, I before we move on to something else, I I want to bring up Liz Cheney. And I'm not said, touching that one with a ten inch pole. I, <laughs> we are. Um, I, you see, I transitioned. <laughs> I want to talk Liz Cheney for just a minute, um, because the conversation since she lost her primary last week had been yes. really fascinating. And I have to say, uh, you know, I was on the Sunday show on MSNBC Sunday, and you were on Katie Fang Sunday morning right, for right. me. You know, we were talking about this and, and the idea of Liz Cheney unleashed. I am so here for this because she now is just going to destroy these Republican poltroons. And she started it already saying that Josh Hawley and Ted Cruz and Kevin McCarthy are unfit for office. And this is a preview of what she's going to do from now 
through at least the 2024 election. And believe me, the Republicans do not want Liz no. Cheney, who has the credibility of being a Cheney. OK, you can't call her a rhino, for God's sakes. Constantly a, a thorn in their sides. I think it's going to be spectacular. And she, Stu was on with me last uh, Thursday mm -hmm. when you weren't here. And he was telling stories about the Cheney's and things like that. Take the politics, you know, what she, her policies out of this. Liz Cheney is like the perfect nemesis for these Republicans right now. You know what the, the, the real thing about it is? And as a, you know, as a, as a guy who as a young man worked for, for Cheney when he was Secretary of Defense. Right. I can tell you one thing about the Cheney's. I can tell you what I know. There's a difference in the world between serious people and between people who are lightweights and trivial and transitory. Mm -hmm. Serious people will come together and, and they can do it in a, in, in a way that isn't always like grim and ponderous, but they come together with a plan. They execute the plan. A plan beats no plan every time. And right now, Liz Cheney has executed a plan which has brilliantly occupied Donald Trump's brain and yeah. broken it. She built a better media operation than Donald Trump had in order to tell the story of the egregious and, and horrifying story of January 6th. Mm -hmm. And she has done a brilliant job at it. And we're now seeing places like Iowa today, there's a poll out today, showing in a three-way race between Biden, Trump, and Cheney that she would take 11% of the vote. Oof. I can tell you, uh, that ain't coming out of Joe Biden's <laughs> count, folks. No, it's in not. In Iowa. Not exactly a, a state where the Republicans have abandoned Donald Trump. That's right. And, That's right. And so serious people doing serious things. Mm -hmm. you know, there's basically, and Neil Stevenson once said, there's no, there's no limit to what serious people can do when they come together and put protocol and tradition aside. <laughs> she has put together the put aside the protocol of never attack a former Republican, never, never betray the honor of the uh, of, of a former president, because he deserves none of those things. Right. And we're in a different forum now that she actually has adapted where some folks have not. They're still operating right. in a in where the conventional wisdom exists. And that shit is out the window now. OK. And she has made um, that adjustment. And thank God, because now she's actually coming with the weapons she needs to play in the game that we're in. And speaking of that, another piece of good news, um, you know, her work on January 6th and how impactful it's been. NBC News just had a poll out a couple of days ago that right. showed that the most important issue on the vote on voters' minds is democracy, which it's has the advantage of being true. It is the exactly. most important issue. That's um, good for Democrats, folks. So and, the, and it's folks, that to came trend from good direction. That number came from two factors: the preparatory work, the slow, slow, sometimes very slow <laughs> build up by the January sixth committee. And by the fact that people are now understanding that if you support Trump, you support a post-rule of law America. You support a, an America that does not look like the United States as you think you know it. Mm -hmm. It looks like an authoritarian regime. And as someone said recently, show me an authoritarian regime with multi-generational prosperity. You can't. That's right. And if you elect some of these Republicans who are running in the midterms, that is the direction the country will go in. One of those examples of these kooks who want to basically burn everything down is Carrie Lake out in Arizona, who is kooky <laughs> Carrie Lake. This kooky Trump, Carrie. Kooky Carrie, this Trump fembot nut is out here saying crazy hey, that's an shit. insult to fembots. <laughs> She's saying crazy shit. And one of the things that she said um, recently is that she thinks that we should fire the entire federal government. Oh, oh Really? Well, of course, Good job. Lincoln, let's go. Let's Lincoln see how Project that works had, out for you. <laughs> Lincoln Project had something to say about that. Let's roll it. We need to send a very big message to the federal government that we're not going to take this anymore. We need to fire the federal government. Interesting idea. Maybe it's a good idea. Of course, 42 percent of Arizona's budget comes from the federal government. So that will require a 72 percent increase in state taxes to fill the gap. You got that kind of money? No more Social Security checks. No more Medicare. Luke Air Force Base, gone. In fact, say goodbye to most of the Air Force, Army, Marine bases all over the state. Arizona students would need to figure something else out because federal student aid would have to go. And sadly, all the national parks, including the Grand Canyon, well, they'd have to close. And we'd also lose all of our air traffic controllers, which sounds fun. But hey, drug traffickers would be happy. 
There wouldn't be a DEA in the state anymore. So we need to fire the federal government. Right now, Carrie Lake is just a kook with crazy ideas. But if Arizona elects her for governor, her crazy ideas could crush Arizona's economy, raise our taxes, make our communities less safe, and turn Arizona into a national joke. Does this still sound like a good idea? That's how you do it. That's a great ad. The, the team the team worked on that one over the weekend, and I think it is... Well done. I think it is a real killer. Yes. And we've got it up right now in Arizona, and we're going to keep pushing it in Arizona. If you want to support the ad, folks, you can go to lincolnproject.com slash donate, and uh, we will keep that. We will keep putting that in their face. That is an incredibly important governor's race, especially for 2024. Mm-hmm. Um, and beating a person like um, Carrie Lake sends a very clear signal. It will also hurt down the ballot and help us win the Secretary of State's race. And and to not have weirdo um, um, crypto Nazi bodybuilder Blake Masters, um, yeah. who also is just the I mean. That is a guy who, like, the goon prize was issued for this dude. I'm telling it's you. So <clears throat> squicky, so creepy. Ugh. He's another creeper. I just, I, I don't know how all these people gravitate toward um, these Senate races. And these and, and Republicans are just like, yeah, come on in. When we were talking about ex- expanding the big tent for Republicans, we weren't talking about these people. Okay. Dot <laughs> U.S. It's LincolnProject.us. I'm a, I'm a freaking idiot. <laughs> That's all right. I'm an it's... idiot, people. <laughs> We'll give I'm you a, a trained pass. monkey here on the stage for your delight and amusement. <laughs> we'll give you a pass, Wilson. <laughs> oh, well. By, it, by it, the way, yeah. um, I don't know if you guys, if you heard about this story in Alabama this afternoon, where the former head of the Trump campaign in Alabama, the chairman of the Trump campaign in 2016 in Alabama, weirdly was arrested on sexual assault charges. Uh, you know, it reminds me that every single accusation by the Republicans about predators and groomers and pedophiles Mm -hmm. is projection. Mm -hmm. Every single attack about pedos and groomers and pedophiles is a confession on their part. Seems that way because this isn't the first one. There was the nope. other one, right? At the the RNC finance guy that that uh, got caught with all that porn and like, the I creep, mean, uh, Ruben Verastugi or whatever his name uh, is. Is that the right name? Something like that. Ugh. I mean, it's it's uh, it's it's nuts. And and also a, a Tennessee Republican lawmaker um, was also arrested today over alleged bribery. <laughs> so they're just batting a thousand out there. I knew there was another arrest in a different state uh, for a, a Republican. I mean, they're just batting a thousand. And you know what else happened today? Those fuckers that plotted to try to kill and kidnap Governor Whitmer Thank in Michigan. Thank God. Convicted. Oh, and Convicted. remember the talking points for weeks were, this is a fake story. That's a setup. The FBI did it. It's not a false flag. No. 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 You motherfuckers are now going to prison on federal kidnapping and conspiracy charges. Mm -hmm. Have fun. Mm -hmm. And these were not just like random yahoos. They were part of the Boogaloo movement, which is one of the most dangerous of these extremist groups out there. They are, they are no joke. So that I hope this sends a message to those fuckers. So good for, good for them. Good, 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 good Good for the, good for the the prosecutors out there. Yes. And, and at least two of the ringleaders now are going to do some serious time. And, mm-hmm. and and well deserved. Yes, absolutely. Um, uh, one more thing, because it is Thursday, it's and Thursday. of course we, you know, I mean, I'm sorry, it's Tuesday, not Thursday. What am I talking about? Wait, I see, like I'm losing it too. I know it's not Thursday. It's Tuesday. Oh, I'm God, losing I was it like, also. Thank God, it's Thursday already. <laughs> I know. I'm jumping gotta, ahead gotta, of myself. Woo. I know, but anyway, it's Tuesday, not Thursday, and that means last week in the Republican Party. So since we've been having so much fun with you guys tonight, we figured let's run last week on the Republican Party. Uh, last week in the Republican. Let's go Party. out. Let's go out tonight with a bang. I'm and like leave Ted you Cruz. With a bang. <laughs> on that note, roll it. See you guys. Nunez. Nunez. <laughs> We never thought Georgia would would go for Biden, and I, I know for a fact it didn't. The Illuminati, the elites, they use the Wizard of Oz to mind control child slaves. We have to have Nunez here because there has to be at least one person who tells the truth. Nunez. I believe in a far-right authoritarian government. No, I am not a fascist. 
Donald Trump is the Messiah of America. I want them to be able to actually protect themselves against real threats and kick some ass out there and maybe intervene when a school shooter comes and shoots their asses. Please come back wherever you are. We need someone who's going to tell the truth. Please come back. These are the people that I'm talking about that need to be bullied. I saw, I have this kind of a blessing, but it's also a curse where I'm able to see things coming <laughs> years ahead of when they actually happen, right? And of course, that's when people call you a conspiracy theory. If Joe Biden's goal was to do the opposite of Donald Trump, he is nailing it on the work ethic front. We are um, very honest, very clean, uh, no substances, uh, live very, very, very clean lives. I have no hatred in my heart for these people. They are disgusting. They are gross. The Jezebel spirit, which is who Liz Cheney is. There should be no secular teaching in the school. My goal as governor of Pennsylvania is make uh, Pennsylvania the Florida of the North. I don't know about you, but I think it's somewhat ignorant to rely solely on elections to make these essential changes that our country so desperately needs. I have friends on SEAL teams that tell me they spend more time now in diversity training than they do shooting. But that said, I am supporting DeSantis. Please, 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 please. I want to see them go as far right as possible and then go even further right than that. Oh my God! These I, I don't know who that last guy is. Who are these? These I, I don't know who that last guy is, but um, Philip is that yeah. you? <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's Philip. Not, it's, it's not, not Philip. Philip, we love Philip. Team here, at LP. It's not him. It's not him. We're just messing with you, Philip. Uh, the and the idea of Liz Cheney being a Jezebel. That Liz Cheney's the Jezebel spirit in the Republican Party. Um, newsflash, they've already got one of those, and her name starts with a K. All right. On that note, um, we will see you guys in a couple of weeks. We are taking a couple weeks off for the rest of the summer, and we will be back September 6th. Tuesday, September 6th, we'll be back in full force, cutting up and uh, keeping it 100. In the meantime, do. I'm going to be manifesting fall by turning the air conditioning down to 50 degrees <laughs> oh, and living on a diet of pumpkin spice lattes. I'm not, that is not allowed until after Labor Day. <laughs> I refuse to do anything fall related until after Labor Day. It is oh, but man, don't you worry. The second Labor Day is done, <laughs> all the Halloween shit comes out. Oh, it's terrible. I, <laughs> no, I refuse. I refuse. Anyway, thanks, guys. We'll Good night, see folks. Have a great thing. weekend. Have, we'll see you after the break. And we will be back with more hijinks and frivolity and uh, the fate of the Republic. Yeah, we're going to continue to uh, fight for freedom and have fun, as my old boss used to say. See you guys then.